uh, singer Whitney Houston, one of the greatest voices of our generation, seeing it has gotten confirmation from a representative, has died. Whitney Houston has died. Grammy-winning entertainer, 48 years old. Nobody ever imagined that Whitney Houston could do something like this out of the blue. At Bobby Brown's 25th birthday celebration, an unexpected comment about his mother sparked a tense moment. Will their relationship survive the growing public scrutiny that follows such intense, personal revelations? Join us as we delve deeper into the unraveling public life of Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston. A family dispute turns the party sour. It all happened quickly. The interviewer made a few remarks about Bobby's mother that Bobby found disrespectful. He immediately cut in, his voice filled with disbelief and frustration, insisting that his mother deserves to be spoken about with more respect. Bobby pointed out that his mother is a genuine and caring person and he believes that deserves acknowledgement. He made it clear that anyone who doesn't respect that has no business being at the party. As Bobby spoke, Whitney looked increasingly uneasy, clearly feeling the tension in the room. The atmosphere became tense, a stark contrast to the celebration everyone had gathered for. Bobby decided to shift the focus of the conversation. He encouraged the interviewer to talk about other things instead, bringing up his stepmother and emphasizing how much she means to him. It was an effort to move past the awkwardness and return to the positive mood of the event. As the interview went on, the focus turned to the importance of family, helping to smooth over the earlier discomfort. Whitney Houston, often seen as America's sweetheart, had a voice that could move anyone, making her a national icon, not just for her music, but also for her efforts to address social issues. Similarly, Bobby Brown enjoyed a successful career, with hit songs and a huge fan following, but with fame came challenges, especially as Bobby reached the height of his career in the late 1980s, his personal life started to unravel, marked by controversies and growing criticism because of his bold and sometimes offensive performances. The media was quick to highlight Bobby's wild lifestyle, leaving little to the imagination. One of Whitney's most unforgettable moments was her performance of the Star Spangled Banner at the 1991 Super Bowl. At a time when America was feeling a mix of pride and tension due to the Gulf War, Whitney sang the national anthem in a tracksuit delivering a performance so powerful that it became a top-charting hit. This solidified her status as a beloved national figure, with many considering her rendition the best ever. Before meeting Whitney, Bobby was in a different phase of his life. He had moved on from his success with New Edition and was trying to maintain his solo career even though his popularity was waning. While in London, he spent time with locals, showing a side of himself that was easygoing and fun, very different from the troubled image the media often portrayed. Bobby's charm was undeniable, and when he met Whitney, he was completely taken by her. Despite her polished image and connections to high-profile celebrities like Eddie Murphy and Randall Cunningham, Whitney was drawn to Bobby's sincere and down-to-earth nature. The relationship between Whitney and Bobby caught many off guard, given his reputation as a charming but controversial figure with a complicated personal life. However, Whitney found Bobby's authenticity refreshing. He treated her like a regular person, not the superstar everyone else saw. This was a huge contrast to those who were often intimidated by her fame. Their connection was real, built on genuine affection and respect, going beyond what society expected. Their relationship showed just how unpredictable love can be. It doesn't always follow what people expect. Whitney was drawn to Bobby's sense of humor and the happiness he brought into her life, which was a break from the pressures of her celebrity world. Their bond was a reminder that sometimes love makes choices that don't make sense to others, but feel right to the people involved. This unexpected pairing, though confusing to many, was a story of how love can be enduring and surprising. But that wasn't the end of their story. Their relationship, though often misunderstood, was rooted in something deeper a connection that defied logic and societal norms, showing that true love doesn't always look the way we think it should. During a lighthearted moment backstage, Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown were seen having fun as they playfully acted out scenes from movies like Tina Turner and Natural Born Killers. These moments showed a different side of Whitney, one that enjoyed simple, joyful times far from the pressures of her global fame. Although she loved to sing, the constant attention and scrutiny that came with being a celebrity were not what she wanted. 
Whitney often struggled with the expectations placed on her, especially when the media or public criticized her for the people she chose to associate with. This constant invasion of her privacy made it harder for her to stay true to herself. In the early 1990s, Whitney decided to step into the world of acting, taking the lead role in the movie The Bodyguard. This move not only made her an even bigger star, but also showed that she could do more than just sing. While acting wasn't something that came naturally to her, her intelligence and the chemistry she shared with her co-star, Kevin Costner, who strongly supported her for the role, made her performance convincing and engaging. Her version of I Will Always Love You, which she sang for the film's soundtrack, became a huge hit, even bigger than anything she had done before. Interestingly, the song was originally written by Dolly Parton as a goodbye to her musical partner, but it became a timeless classic thanks to Whitney. The song stayed at the top of the American charts for 20 weeks straight, and Dolly Parton even thanked Whitney for making the song more beautiful than ever. But this wasn't the only change in Whitney's life. The success of The Bodyguard made Whitney even more famous, which brought more complications, especially in her marriage to Bobby Brown. Even though Bobby had his own successes, he couldn't match the level of fame Whitney reached. This imbalance made things difficult, especially as Bobby's struggles with alcohol and illegal substances became more serious. He faced multiple arrests and there was even a terrifying incident where he was kidnapped over an illegal substances debt with Whitney paying a large sum to get him released. Publicly, Bobby was often called Mr. Houston, a title that hurt his pride and made him jealous, though he rarely spoke about it. Whitney Houston's struggle in her marriage with Bobby Brown. In a candid interview with Oprah Winfrey, Whitney opened up about the challenges of being in a relationship where one partner is much more famous than the other. She tried to ease the situation by asking people to call her Mrs. Brown instead of Whitney Houston, hoping it would make Bobby feel more secure. Despite her efforts, their relationship became known for its troubles with rumors of domestic violence and illegal substances. These issues started to take a toll on Whitney's career as she began to cancel performances and interviews more frequently. And when she did show up, she was often late. Both Whitney and Bobby had difficult childhoods and struggled with self-esteem, which led to a toxic and dependent relationship. As public criticism grew louder, Whitney withdrew further into her struggles with addiction, mirroring Bobby's own battles. This combination of personal and public challenges deeply affected their lives, showing just how heavy the burden of fame can be. Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown were deeply connected by a complicated bond that kept them tied to each other in a world where they felt only they truly understood one another. They saw each other as their only real confidant and lover. But this belief covered up a deeper denial of their personal struggles. While their connection seemed to offer them comfort, it also made their problems worse by keeping them from facing the truth. Whitney once said that Bobby was like an obsession to her, showing just how addictive and unhealthy their relationship had become. She even believed that their fights were just another way they showed love, which highlights the confusion and intensity of their feelings. Whitney's brother Gary, a former NBA player whose career was affected by illegal substances, also struggled with addiction, suggesting that deeper family issues may have influenced Whitney's own battles. Gary admitted that he used illegal substances to escape from unresolved childhood trauma, a pattern that might have been similar in Whitney's life. Her actions could have been an attempt to escape her own personal pain, much like the destructive behaviors seen in her siblings. In the early days of Whitney and Bobby's relationship, things were different. Bobby was a big star in his own right, and it was hard for him to adjust to being in the shadow of Whitney, whose fame was growing even bigger. This shift in their careers, Whitney's rising fame and Bobby's fading popularity put a strain on their relationship. It created a power struggle that Bobby found difficult to accept. One of Whitney's most powerful songs, I Have Nothing, captures the depth of her emotions for Bobby. The lyrics suggest that even though she was famous and successful, her relationship with Bobby was what mattered most to her. When she sang, I have nothing, I have nothing without you, it felt like a confession of how much she depended on him. Despite having everything, Whitney felt an overwhelming need for Bobby's love, revealing a vulnerability and reliance on him that defined her life. Their relationship was built on codependency, marked by a destructive need for each other's validation and support. 
Even though Whitney had incredible talent, fame, and wealth, none of it seemed to matter as much as her need for Bobby's love. This dependency, while comforting at times, led them into a cycle of mutual destruction, overshadowing what they could have achieved both individually and together. Even with all the ups and downs in their relationship, Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown welcomed their daughter, Bobby Christina, on March 13, 1993. For Whitney, becoming a mother brought new meaning to her life. She was excited about the simple joys of raising her daughter, like hearing her say, Mommy, for the first time. At this point, Whitney had just finished working on a movie and its soundtrack and was even thinking about making a gospel album, showing her desire to balance her career with being a mom. Whitney was determined to keep her daughter close, no matter how busy she was. Bobby Christina often traveled with her, though she spent a lot of time with Whitney's mother or with the crew because it wasn't always practical to have a child on tour or on set. This unusual way of growing up meant that Bobby Christina was exposed to parts of adult life that weren't really ideal for a child. Around the same time, Bobby Brown's behavior was becoming more and more troublesome. As his music career started to fade, he seemed eager to stay in the spotlight, even if it was for the wrong reasons. He got into a club fight, faced assault and battery charges, got into a drunk driving accident, and even went to rehab at the Betty Ford Clinic. However, there was a brief moment of hope when he rejoined New Edition, and their comeback album, Home Again, topped the charts in September 1996. Bobby went on tour with New Edition, but with the group's success boosting his confidence, he decided to give his solo career another shot. In 1997, he released his fourth solo album, Forever. He had a lot of creative control, writing and producing most of the songs himself. Unfortunately, the album didn't do well mostly because it wasn't promoted properly. The only single feeling inside didn't make much of an impact. Meanwhile, Whitney was busy working on her first studio album in seven years. This was a tough time for her, marked by struggles with illegal substances and very public marital issues. What was initially supposed to be a greatest hits album with a few new songs turned into a full album called My Love Is Your Love. This album featured collaborations with big names like Missy Elliott and showed that Whitney could still adapt her music to fit the changing times, all while keeping her unique style. But this wasn't just about music. My Love Is Your Love was a critical success and gave Whitney's image a fresh look. The title track with its slight reggae vibe was a big departure from her usual pop style. Produced by Wyclef Jean and Lauryn Hill, two major figures in music at the time, the song not only reconnected Whitney with her longtime fans, but also attracted a younger audience. It proved that Whitney was still a powerful force in the ever-changing music world. The Strained Silence of Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown Bobby Brown's relationship with alcohol had a big impact on how he treated Whitney Houston. He often disrespected her, especially in private. While he avoided outright violence in front of their family, behind closed doors, he would belittle her, making her feel small and controlled. This behavior was his way of asserting dominance over her. Whitney admitted that their illegal substances use created a huge distance between them. Even though they lived in the same house, they would often go days without talking, simply existing in the same space while getting high. Their daily routine became one of sitting next to each other, glued to the TV, barely interacting except when they were preparing to use illegal substances again. They would lace their marijuana with other illegal substances, which only deepened their disconnection from reality and from each other. This period in their lives was marked by a severe breakdown in communication and emotional closeness, showing how isolating their illegal substances use had become. This unhealthy dynamic continued in Whitney's life until her tragic death in February 2012 at the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Beverly Hills. The hotel was a place she visited often, but sadly it became the site of her passing. Efforts to save her were unsuccessful, and at first no one knew exactly what had caused her death. A month later, it was revealed that she had accidentally drowned in her bathtub, with an autopsy showing she had cocaine, marijuana, Xanax, and other medications in her system. These illegal substances, combined with her heart problems, likely played a role in her death. The emergency call from the hotel painted a sad and urgent picture. A 46-year-old woman, unresponsive in the bathroom, and paramedics were needed right away. 
The operator tried to gather more information, highlighting the confusion and panic of the situation. Whitney's death shocked the world, especially since many had seen signs of her ongoing struggles. The media coverage that followed focused on the contrast between her public image and her private battles, casting a shadow over her legacy and leaving her fans and family mourning the loss of such a talented yet troubled star. In the years after her death, people continued to reflect on her life, especially her complicated relationship with Bobby Brown and how their choices affected each other. Their story is a powerful reminder of how fame, addiction, and personal challenges can deeply impact not only the individuals involved, but also those around them. It serves as a cautionary tale about the real human cost behind the glitz and glamour of celebrity life. In room 434 of the Beverly Hilton Hotel, Whitney Houston, aged 46, was found unresponsive. Efforts to revive her failed, and an investigation showed she had water in her lungs and cocaine in her system, though not enough to be fatal. It's believed her cocaine use and heart disease may have caused her to lose consciousness or have a heart attack and drown. The news of Whitney's death shocked the world, highlighting her well-known struggles with illegal substances. Criticism fell on those close to her for not intervening. When her death was confirmed at 3.55 p.m., confusion and chaos engulfed her hotel room as her entourage and security tried to cope with the tragic event. But this wasn't the end of the blame game. Attention quickly turned to Bobby Brown, Whitney's ex-husband, as people looked for someone to hold responsible. Many accused him of influencing her illegal substances habits, though Bobby denied knowing that she was still struggling with addiction. He faced heavy criticism, with people saying that his negative influence had played a big part in her downfall. In January 2015, their daughter, Bobby Christina, died in almost the same way as her mother. She was found unresponsive in a bathtub by a housemate named Max. Although she was revived and put on life support, she passed away months later. Like Whitney, Bobby Christina's death was due to a combination of drowning and illegal substances intoxication. In 2018, Bobby Brown released a biopic that shared many private details about their relationship. He talked about their infidelities and his own violent behavior, even admitting that he once threatened Whitney with a gun during an argument. His openness about their struggles with addiction, including his own health problems from illegal substances use, painted a very dark picture of their life together. Despite all the turmoil, Bobby claimed in 2022 that Whitney was the love of his life. He described their relationship as deeply passionate, filled with both intense arguments and deep affection. This shows just how complicated their bond was, marked by strong emotions and shared challenges, leaving behind a legacy of both great love and deep sadness. How did Whitney and Bobby's turbulent interview mark a turning point in their public perception? What can we learn from the stark revelation of their private lives played out under the harsh spotlight? Join us as we explore these questions and more. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more.